<clears throat> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, so today we will uh, discuss the anatomy of the female external genitalia and vaginal canal. Uh, as we know that the female uh, external genitalia is collectively known as the uh, vulva, uh, which consists of the mons pubis, uh, clitoris, labia majora, labia minora, and uh, the greater vestibular glands, the lesser vestibular glands. So all these, they uh, form the um, external genitalia. Uh, as far as the mons pubis is uh, concerned, which is also known as the mons uh, veneris, uh, it's uh, actually present in the interior part and uh, it's covered by hair uh, follicles and uh, it is uh, uh, a pair of fat actually which is uh, connected to the pubic uh, synthesis just below uh, posterior to this uh, mons pubis uh, we have an erectile tissue that is known as the clitoris and this uh, clitoris is uh, homologous uh, with the penis in the male uh, but the basic difference is that uh, uh, it is not traversed by urethra. Urethra has a separate opening in uh, females, while in males, the uh, genitalia and the urethra, they share the same structure. And uh, for this clitoris, it has a glance and um, uh, it has a shape. And uh, it's composed of two carpora, which is known as carpora uh, cavernosa. Uh, Carpus spongiosum is absent uh, here. Uh, the labia majora, labia majora is uh, actually uh, two folds of the skin uh, present on uh, each side uh, of the uh, pudendal cleft and uh, it's covered by uh, skin uh, while um, outer side is covered by skin uh, with the hairs while the inner side uh, uh, is actually covered with glands. So these are the sebaceous glands and the thread glands and that has its own uh, secretions. So it's uh, two folds of skin by uh, raised by underlying fat and passing back from the mons pubis to the perineum. The outer skin is covered by hairs while the inner medial surface is smooth, hairless and contains sebaceous and uh, thread uh, glands. Uh, inside this uh, labia majora, we have two other folds of uh, skin which are known as the labia minora. Uh, so the labia minora, uh, one each is present on each side, and uh, this labia minora in the upper part uh, it divides uh, into two layers on each side. The upper layer, it uh, fuses with the upper layer of the opposite side and uh, this form the uh, refuse of the clitoris. While the lower um, lip on each side, they fuse together and they form the frenulum of the uh, clitoris. Posteriorly, the two uh, labia uh, minora, uh, they uh, fuse together and uh, they form the frenulum of the labia uh, minora. So these are thin folds of modified skin and situated medial to the labia majora. Uh, inside this labia minora, we have a vestibule uh, of the vagina or the uh, entritus and uh, this uh, entritus is uh, covered uh, by a membrane and uh, this membrane is uh, known as the hymen in nulliparous unmarried uh, this uh, hymen is intact uh, and uh, uh, which is present in different shapes uh, while in uh, the married domain this is just represented by uh, the round uh, edges or tubercles known as the caruncle uh, hymenale. 
So it's a membrane situated about two centimeter from the vestibule. Uh, they demarcate the external from the internal genital organ. So this is just a boundary, a demarcation between external genitalia and uh, internal genitalia. And it partially closes the vaginal uh, orifice. So it is uh, nariparous, unmarried. Uh, this is a small central opening. And of course, uh, it gives the passage uh, to the menstrual cycle, the menstrual bleed in each uh, cycle. Uh, the glands, the different glands, they are the Bartholin glands, which are also known as the greater vestibular uh, glands. So the Bartholin glands, they are present uh, on each uh, side uh, of the uh, vestibule and they have its own secretions and uh, um, these uh, secret mucus during sexual excitement and they are situated deep in the labia majora at the junction of the posterior and middle third. Uh, they, has, they have ducts and the duct is two centimeter long and opens between the hymen and the labia minor. So these are the Bartholin glands, which are also known as the greater uh, vestibular uh, glands. Um, and these are just like the uh, bulbo urethral glands uh, in uh, males. So the Bartholin glands, they are present in the female uh, external genitalia. Uh, the, this is the vestibule. Uh, what the vestibule is actually the opening uh, between the labia. Uh, yeah, it's a, you can say a space uh, between the labia minora and the foreshit. Uh, the structure that opens in the vestibule, so they are, these are openings in the vestibule. The openings, they are the urethral opening, the vaginal opening, and the ducts, the duct, they, are, they also open into the vestibule. Uh, so the urethra, uh, urethral opening is present just uh, behind the um, posterior to the clitoris. And the female has a short urethra, uh, about three to four centimeter uh, in length. And the Bartholin gland ducts, they also open into the vestibule and uh, the uh, vagina. Uh, the vestibular bulbs, uh, they are of long uh, masses of erectile tissue that lie on each side of the vaginal introitus. So on each side, these are vestibular bulbs. Uh, external urethral meatus. So this is the, just like uh, the urethra, and it is uh, present posterior to the clitoris uh, in which the urethra opens. Skinny's ducts, these are two blind ending paraurethral Views which open into the floor of the urethra few millimeters from the external urethral meatus. As far as the blood supply of the external genitalia is uh, concerned, it is uh, mainly uh, supplied uh, by the uh, internal pudendal artery, which is uh, the terminal, uh, which is one of the branch of the internal iliac artery that ends in the dorsal artery of the clitoris. Branches from the femoral uh, artery supply the interior part, superficial and deep external pudendal arteries. The venous drainage, the veins, they um, uh, accompany the, uh, the corresponding arteries and they form a venous uh, plexus. So the vulva or the external genitalia of the female has a rich blood supply and if uh, there is annual damage uh, to these venous plexus, especially during uh, childbirth, uh, during delivery of the baby, uh, this may lead to hematoma formation. The lymphatic drainage uh, is uh, from the skin and uh, the appendages uh, to the superficial inguinal limb node, the medial group of the superficial inguinal uh, limb nodes, uh, also to the deep inguinal and femoral limb nodes. And, uh, from the inner, uh, from the formal superficial group, lymphatic channel passed to the deep pelvic nodes, including the external area, common area, and paraortic lymph nodes. The nerve supply is it's supplied by pudendal nerve, which uh, the root uh, of S2, S3, S4. Additional sensory nerves, they are supplied from the egoinguinal nerve, L1, uh, femoral branch, or genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, L1, L2. And posterior to the of the thigh. So, vulva is very sensitive, it has a rich uh, sensory nerve uh, supply and it's sensitive to pain. 
Now uh, about uh, uh, vagina, the vaginal canal is actually a fibromuscular tube and the extent of this vagina is from the vulva up to the uh, uterus, up to the cervix, which, uh, up to the, which is a part of the uterus. And uh, the interior wall is uh, uh, short as compared to the posterior wall. Uh, so the interior wall is eight to nine centimeter, while the posterior wall is 10 to uh, 11 uh, centimeter. In the erect uh, posture, it is directed upwards and uh, backwards and it forms an uh, angle of about 90 degree with the uh, uterus and uh, the protruding part of the cervix uh, it projects into the uh, upper circular uh, part of the vagina and uh, this uh, uh, this is known as the vaginal cornices so the cervix projects into the upper blind end of the vagina that forms a pouch vaginal pouch around the um, cervix and is divided into four right so we have interior fornices we have lateral fornices and we have posterior fornices posterior fornices is deep and uh, the interior fornices is short so we have four uh, vaginal uh, fornices as far as the relation of the vagina is concerned we already knew that uh, interior to the uterus uh, and uh, the uh, vagina we have mainly the urinary bladder so uh, in the upper par part of the vagina we have urinary bladder and in the lower part of course after the bladder the urethra starts so in the lower two third we have urethra posteriorly we know we have uh, in the upper part, we have this pouch. This pouch is known as the uh, pouch of Douglas or the uh, recto-uterine pouch. So in the upper part, we have the recto-uterine pouch or pouch of Douglas. In the middle part, we have the rectum. Uh, and in the lower part, we have the uh, uh, perineal uh, body uh, along with this attachment of the muscles. Later uh, to the vagina, uh, we have uh, the in the lower end we have the bulbo cavernosis muscle, vestibular bulb and barbudin glands, and uh, above the uh, is the levator and eye muscles with the pelvic fascia above it. The lateral fornix gives attachment to the lower part of the cardinal ligament. So the cardinal ligament, which is also means the transverse cervical ligament or the McEnrod ligaments. They also gives attachment to the lateral fornix and this is the area uh, where the uh, the ureter it crosses posterior to the um, uterine artery and uh, may be damaged during uterine surgery so the ureter passes to the cardinal ligament one centimeter lateral to the vagina Uh, the, as far as the vaginal supports are concerned, so uh, the support is provided by the ligaments uh, attached to the upper vagina, uh, cervical ligament interiorly, McEnrod ligament, that is the transfer cervical ligament, it laterally, and the uterosacral, as the name indicates, it, it is present posteriorly. So these are the supports of the um, vagina. Uh, and the levator and eye muscles also provide support to the pubovaginalis part. Triangular ligament and the perineal membrane, vaginal fascia. These are the connective tissue fascia that condenses interiorly forming the vesicovaginal fascia and posteriorly forming the rectovaginal uh, fascia. So these are the vaginal supports. The blood supply of the vagina is mainly the vaginal artery which is a branch of internal iliac artery. Additional branches from the medial rectal artery, inferior rectal artery, uh, these are the blood supply of the vagina. The venous drainage, so the plexus is formed down the vagina, vaginal venous plexus is, that they drains into the internal iliac vein. They are accompanied the here corresponding arteries. Lymphatic drainage of the vagina is uh, the 
upper one third uh, of the vagina follow the dra uh, lymphatic drainage of the cervix so it should drain into the external iliac uh, limb nodes and uh, the middle third uh, drains into the internal iliac nodes while the lower one third to the inguinal limb nodes the nerve supply of the vagina is mainly to the pudendal nerve which gives sensory fibers to the lower vagina as far as the applied anatomy of the vagina is concerned, so if there is any weakness of the vaginal supports which we have studied in the form of uh, different ligaments, the vaginal fascia, uh, if they are weakened, what will happen? So interiorly, the bladder will uh, descend down. And uh, this uh, condition is uh, uh, known as the cystocele. Cystocele is the descent of the interior vaginal wall in which the bladder descend downwards and if there is posterior um, prolapse of the rectum then uh, this is known as the recto C and uh, if uh, the patient has undergone surgery that is gastrectomy uh, with the removal of the uterus and cervix uh, and the remaining part which is known as the uh, vault vaginal vault if it descend downwards then this is known as vaginal vault prolapse so we have cystocele we have rectocele we have vaginal vault prolapse uh, the importance of the posterior fornix uh, is we can uh, approach uh, through the posterior fornix uh, into the pouch of douglas um, and we can confirm caldoscopy that is the scopy or the um, examination of the Pouch of Douglas, uh, we can perform caldosynthesis, that is, expiration of fluid from this pouch of Douglas for various examinations. And even if um, there is any accumulation of uh, or collection of pus, uh, uh, which is the pelvic abscess, even we can drain uh, this pelvic um, abscess uh, through this. Um, uh, posterior fornix and nowadays uh, we have a uh, modern type of surgery in the form of notes surgery uh, that is the normal orifice uh, surgery in which uh, the scope is passed to this vaginal posterior vaginal fornix and to the peritoneal cavity and uh, different surgeries they can be performed as well the lateral uh, fornix uh, the ureter lies one to two centimeter lateral to it so that it may be injured uh, during climbing the angle of the vagina and instructing operations. So, this was uh, all about the external uh, genitalia and the vagina canal. Thank you.